Mr. Klein here with our second of two lessons in this chapter. Uh, remember, our first lesson in our chapter was on physical and changes, and this lesson will be on chemical changes. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, you know the classic reaction. You're sitting in your class. They have the vinegar, and they drop the your teacher drops the baking soda in and expands with this big, this big huge set of bubbles and stuff, and it looks like a volcanic eruption or this example right here where you put in uh put in a balloon and the balloon expands because of the gas okay that what happens right there is actually a chemical change okay so let's go ahead and let's get started with our notes and like i said we're sitting there there's the fizz and there's all of that stuff and the bubbles and stuff like uh, that that's a chemical change so let's go ahead and let's define it a chemical change is when matter changes into entirely different substances and has chemical properties that are different than what they have before. In other words, what ends up happening is you have one or more substances that go together, there's some sort of change, and you have completely different substances with completely different properties. So as a result, it's not the same as what it was before. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's get started with our graphic organizer and you can go ahead and set that up and I'll give you a second in order to get that ready. Okay. So now that we have that, let's go on and let's continue. Make sure you write that definition right there. Uh, after that, we need to talk about two types of general, general types rather of chemical changes. For our purposes, there's two types. Now there's several more if you're in high school, they go into even deeper detail. In our class, we'll go into a little deeper detail when we talk about chemical reactions later on. But the first type is when substances come together to create a new substance. For instance, the baking soda and vinegar come together and it creates carbon dioxide. Okay, that's one type. The second type is when one substance breaks apart to form new substances. There's other types we're going to discuss later, but like I said, they either combine or they break down. Sometimes they swap out, sometimes they explode, you know, things like that. So whenever they come together, you see we have the two substances, A and B. Chemical reaction takes place, that's the arrow, and what we have is a new substance, AB. Okay? Then, when we have reactions that break down, it's the opposite. We have AB, you know, one substance, and then it breaks down into A and B. Uh, if you're in my class, later on we'll look at an electrolysis reaction where water, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, gets broken apart into hydrogen and oxygen. And we can look at that. That's this type of reaction where it falls apart. Okay, so that's the two general types of reactions. And so let's go ahead and let's add this to our uh, graphic organizer right here. So the results are generally you either combine substances or you break them down. So... Let's go into the next part of what we're going to be talking about. It's the size of chemical change. You might be asking yourself, well, Mr. Klein, how do we know if a chemical change is taking place? Well, here's some tips. First off, uh, you can observe that one, for example, gas bubbles are released. Okay. And of course, the example for that is baking soda and vinegar, the bubbles and stuff form. That's carbon dioxide. So that's evident that there was a chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and let's add gas being released to our graphic organizer. See, we have the signs of a chemical change. And you can add that right there with a dotted line that tells us it's related to signs of chemical changes. Okay, the next one after that is something changes color. Okay, For, that's oftentimes a good sign that there was a chemical reaction or a chemical change, rather. For instance, we have the clear solution, uh, the clear chemical. It gets poured into the yellow chemical and look what happens as soon as it goes in you see the red okay that change in color from clear to red is a sign that a chemical change took place so what we're going to do is we're going to add that change in color and we'll visit that later on in this lesson the whole concept of changing color so now that you have that okay so so we have gas bubbles are released sometimes changes color and odor is produced a smell you can smell something okay a great example of that is cooking. So you're like grilling, you got a steak on the grill, you hear the sizzle and you smell the cooking, you smell the cooked steak and stuff like that. I bet you're watching this and you're suddenly hungry for a steak. Okay, that, that's a sign of a chemical change. Okay, the, the heat is cooking the meat and changing it, breaking down proteins and acids and stuff like that and changing them. So the smell of cooking is actually a sign that a chemical change was taking place. So... Those are three. And the final one 
it's kind of interesting. Sometimes you have two mixtures and you put them together. And if you have two liquid mixtures, you put them together and a solid comes out. A great example of this are eggs. Okay, eggs, you have the yolk and then you have the egg white. They're both clear. Uh, I'm sorry, they're both liquids. The egg white's clear. You put them in and you cook it and look what happens. It solidifies. It turns into a solid. Okay, so because it was cooked, chemical reactions took place. There were chemical changes and things that happened like that. And the egg white turned from clear to white. So let's go ahead and let's add that solid forming from a solution. So we have four signs of a chemical change right there. Okay, with our graphic organizer. Now, next one is how permanent is a chemical change? Chemical changes are actually almost always permanent. In other words, you can't easily undo the chemical change and like a physical change. For example, you melt ice into liquid water. Well, it's easy to turn it back to ice. You just make it cold and drop it below its freezing point. Can't quite do that with a chemical reaction. Usually what you have to do, for instance, if you have a copper penny and it is tarnished, it's turned green or really dirty or black, you need to perform another chemical reaction for this to occur. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add this. It needs another chemical change to reverse it up there on our graphic organizer that, you know, it's not easily reversed. You got to usually do another chemical reaction and to turn it around. And just for an example right here, you see we have these two pennies right there. You mix it with salt and vinegar and you mix it. And as a result, the tarnishing on from the older penny gets removed. And as you can see, it's much cleaner and restored. That's the chemical reaction taking away the new substance made by tarnishing. So finally, how to check if an observed change is physical or chemical. Now, you heard this in the last lesson. You know the question ask yourself. If you're ever unsure, you ask yourself, is it still blank? If there's a new substance or substances made by the change, then what you observed was a chemical change. If it's still the same substance but just has a different physical property, it was a physical change. So let's go ahead and let's look at an example. Leaves, okay? Fall comes around. The previously green leaves turn brown or orange or red or something like that. You might be asking yourself, well, Mr. Kine, or, you know, is that a chemical change? Well, leaves are green, of course, because of chlorophyll, okay? And when the cool temperatures come, a signal is given to the tree, and the uh, leaves fall as a result of chemical reactions breaking down chlorophyll. And so it changes the different chemicals, which gives it the different colors. So you question, you can ask yourself, you look at the leaves that have changed now that it's fall, and you ask yourself, is it still chlorophyll in those leaves that cause the leaves to be green? Well, the answer is no, and as a result, because it isn't chlorophyll anymore, it's an example of a chemical change. So let's go ahead and let's finally add the checklist. Is it still blank? If it's yes, if it's still that, it's a physical change. But in our instance, the answer is no, so it was a chemical change. So let's go ahead and let's wrap up this lesson. We have... Uh, chemical changes, okay, they're when matter changes into entirely different substances and have chemical properties that are different than what they had before. They generally result with substances being combined or broken down. Uh, we can tell there's several signs from, that a chemical change took place. For instance, uh, a gas could be released. There might be a change in color. Uh, there might be an odor release. Or even if you mix two solutions, you might have a change in state where a solid comes out. Okay, and the thing about chemical changes as opposed to physical changes is you usually need another chemical change in order to reverse it. They're not easily changed. And finally, the checklist to ask yourself, is it still blank? The answer for chemical changes, rather, is that it is no. Okay, there is a new substance that's been created. So as a result, what you have is something different. So there you go. That's your lesson, final lesson of the chapter. If you, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.